Don't try to look for exotic stocks making exotic moves. You're looking for the same names. Good companies were resting, coming out of channels, and there's the, those are the ones that are giving the biggest measure potential. So let me give you guys uh, some names I like. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrade.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody had a, a pretty good day of trading. Um, earnings, right? Earnings season, um, second weekend, Tesla kicked off uh, the week. Uh, first glance, pretty good. They ran up the stock. Um, ahead of its numbers of 14, 15 points on the day. And when you look at the after hours move, uh, it stopped right at the 680 level that we talked about. That was the last supply zone that we put on some levels ahead of earnings. And you can tell here, it's a really, really good area because if you look at the pre-market high, excuse me, if you look at the after hours high, it is going to be 678.44. And if you look at the daily high off the supply is 678.60. Uh, so it needs to get above that 680 level if it wants to start filling in uh, that gap for that push to um, 700, right? It's a very, very uh, important level. But if you look at the, you know, if you look at the numbers, pretty good. Tesla reports more than a billion dollars of net income during the second quarter. Uh, you figure with that type of number, the stock would be exploding through the 700. So far it's not, right? Doesn't mean it won't, uh, doesn't mean it will, it's just not at the time. But the, the bigger picture of kind of where we are is kind of this continuation of the market melt up of 2021. It feels like every single day the market is rallying. It feels like every single day the bulls are just, just taking more and more control of this market every single day. And if you're a bear in this tape, it's very, very tough to kind of get a consistent living going because everything is so strong. One day, uh, these stocks are going to be very, very weak, but today's not the day, right? And you're looking for a catalyst. If you're a bear on, 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 on the other side of the equation, you're looking for a catalyst. And right now, you're just simply not getting it. So what's going to make this market kind of pause, right? We saw what the market did a couple of weeks ago. It paused uh, it did what it had to do. It relaxed. It back tested uh, into rising support, and the bulls took the the reins once again and started putting the market higher. And you can see the strength in the tape uh, continues. Right? You have uh, names, for example, like Amazon. It just doesn't stop. Roku had this monster, monster run up on again. Nobody really knows what the news actually was on Friday, but it continued its move today. Uh, you have Facebook continues to be uh, really, really strong. You got Apple uh, continue to be strong every single day. And tomorrow is the Super Bowl, right? You got the Super Bowl of technology earnings. You got Microsoft tomorrow, AMD. You got Starbucks tomorrow. You got Google tomorrow. Uh, you got Apple and Microsoft and everything in between. And the question is, how long can the, this market continue uh, to kind of grind out, melt up, and just really torture uh, every single short uh, that's standing in its way. And the answer to that is nobody knows and nobody's trying to guess, right? I, I think every single day, our primary goal is, right, stay away. And we, we, we talked about this all the time, continue to stay away. That's anything overextended, anything that had more than a two, three day run. And at the same time, you're putting yourself in a position to find the newer names coming out of channels. So if you watched, for example, uh, the weekend update, again, we weren't focused on Amazon, right? Maybe on a dip. But we're not focused on Amazon. We're not focused uh, on Apple. We're focused on the names that are just coming out of channels, maybe even day two runs. And when you look at uh, today's session, right, when you really dive into today's session, you'll notice a lot of the same similarities. Stocks are coming out of the bottom ranges and starting to reclaim big channels or stocks putting in day to move. So for example, Roku, we talked about this on the video, uh, any weakness this morning was a gift, right? We talked about any gift and should be bought into rising support. Uh, not only did it get into rising support, it trapped more shorts and started going red to green and took out the previous high. In a really, really nice move here. We talked about Zoom for the last couple of days, right? We talked about stocks coming out of bottom channels. And this was a channel that was very, very clear. It was setting up 
and it looked like the bulls were really going to take control. And the most important part of everything that we're seeing right now, it's organic, right? You're not seeing big swings up, big swings down. You're kind of seeing reclaiming, right? Reclaiming levels and nice orderly walk up. And that's the only thing you can ask for uh, a bull market. That's the only thing you can ask for a market that is organic, that is not a whipsaw, that it's not um, news-based uh, type of entity. And this is the type of market, whether you're a bull, bear, or indifferent, depending on what your strategy is, this is what you want to trade. You don't want to see that volatility up 300, down 400. Again, I've said this all, all, all along. Everybody loves the word volatility until things get really, really volatile. I'll take a market like this any single day of the week. It's slower, it's methodical, and it's very, very predictable, especially when channels go from supply to supply and demand to demand. So going into tomorrow's session, again, it's very, very hard to kind of switch gears and turn around and say, well, you know what, maybe tomorrow will be different. Maybe they'll destroy the market. I mean, based on what? I mean, anything is possible. Uh, the market could do whatever it wants just because it looks great today doesn't have, doesn't need to be great tomorrow. But when you're looking on the surface of what you're seeing here, these stocks are just setting up for next legs up. And right now you have the earnings, right? You have earnings as a very, very uh, big catalyst. And these stocks are just waking up literally one by one. So if again, if you look at tomorrow's session, again, I'm not looking at Amazon and Amazon looks great. Again, I, I, I really encourage any people who trade Amazon, look for Amazon on dips, right? Look for, uh, look for Google, for example, on dips, right? These are, these are the stocks that you want to get on dips. Uh, a stock even like, like Roku, you want to get on dip. But when you're looking at names that are coming at the bottom of the channel, those are the names you want to watch. And let me give you guys, uh, let me give you guys some names uh, that I am watching for tomorrow. Again, you want to keep it very simple, right? You, you don't want to, you, you don't want to put yourself in a situation. You don't want to put yourself in a situation. You, you're complexing the issue. Keep it simple, stupid, right? Don't try to look for exotic stocks making exotic moves. You're looking for the same names. Good companies were resting coming out of channels, and there's the, those are the ones that are giving the biggest measure of potential. So let me give you guys uh, some names that I like, for just from that matter, right? You have Disney. Look at Disney, right? Disney had a big move up into earnings. They got sold off, and today it came out of a channel, and look where Disney is, right? Disney's right at the 10-day moving average. And if you've been watching uh, this broadcast uh, for the last you know, just even for the last month or so, you, you, you can see how important the 10-day moving average is. So if Disney starts reclaiming the 10-day moving average, you have room to, you know, 81, 82, the next supply zone. Uh, look at a stock like Expedia, right? It's not going to stand out to a lot of people tonight. It's not going to be a huge move until it reclaims uh, the 50-day moving average macro. But there's a channel here. You can see here, you had a three-day big move, consolidation. If it gets above this channel, why can't this thing go to $67, $68? Uh, even a name like Peloton, that, that again was a very, very uh, huge name in the whole stay-at-home movement, it had the big, big run-up, came back in. Look, two days in a row, it got rejected off the five-day moving average. If the ten-day moving average is the birth of the trade, then the ten-day, then the five-day moving average is the shortest-term sentiment before it confirms. Look at it; you got rejection twice on the five-day moving average. If this thing starts confirming tomorrow, reclaiming those levels. Peloton could wake up as well. So as cool as the Tesla trade will be tomorrow, and there is a macro pivot uh, that's going to be on deck, as strong as Amazon is running into earnings, as strong as, uh, as Amazon and, and Apple and Microsoft are going into their earnings day, it, remember, it's not about the sexy, right? It's not about the sexy, it's about the depth. And when you have stocks that are over, I, want, I don't even want to use overextended, but if you have stocks that are up six, seven days in a row compared to something that's coming out of the bottom of the channel, I'll always go into the stocks that are coming out of the bottom channel every single day in the week, including Sunday. So let's talk about today's action. And by the way, I still love this TTV, right? It had this monster, monster move on Friday. It rested today. If this thing, I'm telling you, if this thing starts confirming this channel here, they're going to start its next leg up. Is it going to happen tomorrow? Is it going to happen the next day? We don't know. But but keep an eye on this thing, guys, for the next couple of days. If it starts confirming Friday's channel, uh, this thing should wake up. So let's talk about uh, today's action. Uh, some pretty good moves. Again, pretty aggressive moves. Uh, the channels were very, very impressive. Um, the areas of 
confirmation were pretty smooth. And that's the most important thing. That kind of falls into the seamless market, the structural market without volatility. That's exactly what we want to see. So uh, Roku, this is my first trade of the day. Just a monster. Uh, 475 rejected twice pre-market. If it builds above, you can get a day to run. Look how strong this Roku is. Just an absolute beast. Uh, it took out the 75, which actually happened to be the previous day's high. But you can see this uh, 75 level. Everybody see this, right? Rejected 75 numerous times. This thing just absolutely exploded. Uh, Zoom was, uh, first of all, Snapchat for experienced traders only. And for all you guys, when you hear me say, watch tomorrow for any weakness for uh, a rising dip, right? Rising dip into 60 minute. So here is the kind of the play. Snapchat for experienced traders only. Had a monster move on earnings on Friday. If there's any potential profit taken this morning, watch that 76 level. That's the rising 60 minute support. If the, the bulls defend that level, it could possibly go red to green. Uh, that's exactly what Snapchat did, right? So here's the 76 level. They went through, they reclaimed it, and Snapchat, you know, ran up to almost 79. So good job for all you guys. Uh, who took that as well. Zoom was good too. Uh, Zoom looks really good. I caught, I caught this stock as well. Uh, 369, 370 needs to build. Here was Zoom, right? And again, not every channel is going to be really, really obvious, but that's the whole point of trading channels. You don't need the top of the range. You don't need the bottom of the range. You can catch it right in between. And you can see right here, the 669, 70 level. It got above that and traded right to that 676 level, which is the next supply. If this thing could just get above 380, you might get a bigger uh, macro move on, on, um, on Zoom. But that was good as well. NVIDIA never got there. TTD never got there. Match.com never got there. Uh, Dash never got there. Uh, Dix.com, right? Uh, we talked about this on the weekend update. Uh, 104, 75, 105 uh, needs to build. Here was uh, Dick Sporting Goods, right? Here's Dick Sporting Goods. It got above, got above that 104, 75, 105. Uh, went to about, you know, ran up about a couple of bucks uh, before it kind of gave up its gains. But nice move, nice move there as well. Uh, Chewy, nice move on Chewy. 87.50 needs to build. Here was Chewy, right? Here was Chewy. So it took out the 87.50 and went uh, all the way to 90 and change. Really nice move on Chewy as well. Uh, team never got to uh, 274. Uh, Chewy take on the way up. Dix is pushing. Roku, 482 on deck. I mean, really, really big moves uh, and some of these moves. Uh, Snapchat might go green. It actually would have, was up 50, 60 cents on the day. So really good move there as well. Uh, Zoom, 675 next stop, went to 676. Uh, Tesla, again, these are the macro levels, guys. Watch these levels for tomorrow. Obviously, 680 is going to be a big number, right? 680 is going to be a big number, and 700 is going to be macro. So definitely, definitely uh, keep that on watch as well. So that's it, folks. That's it. Hope everybody is doing well. Again, the key is every single day, make sure you put in the work. Make sure you're, you're not falling in love with the stocks that already went on their run. The easiest thing to do is get caught in the bright lights. The hardest thing to do is stay disciplined and wait for the ones that didn't rally to kind of join the party. Guys, have a great night. God bless, and I'll see you all tomorrow.